Hello everyone. Welcome to AI Anytime channel. In this video, we are going to explore Mistral OCR service. Mistral AI has released a new service, uh, Mistral OCR, uh, that has that has been really creating a lot of noise. People are saying that that's really good. We're going to test it out and see how good is that. And we are going to build a modular Streamlit app, which we can deploy it. And, you know, people can also use this because the idea here is that, uh, you know, uh, you can just put your API key then start using it. So let's have a look at how we can use Mr. OCR uh, in a streamlit application. Now, if you look at here, you know, uh, first of all, you need a API key. You need an API key from Mistral AI. So go on console.mistral.ai. As simple as that. Log in. You know, just get a free API key from the left hand side called API keys, and that's it. Okay, for now. Now, uh, I'm gonna walk you through the code. This is the application that we're gonna build. You know, Mr. OCR app. I already have built it, so I'm gonna walk you through the code, give the code to you, you know, from GitHub, and you can also deploy it on a Streamlit Cloud in free, so you can try it out. Now, OCR is one of the most famous and required thing, right? When it comes to comes to data uh, digitization, when you want to digitize your data, you will have handwritten notes, scanned documents, and a lot of uh, media files where you want to extract information, right? You need some kind of OCR service. Uh, and that's where it's really, really crucial, you know, to use a better OCR service. Earlier, we used to work with a lot of OCR models, guys, or OCR libraries like EG OCR, Paddle OCR, uh, Tesseract, PyTesseract, and Google has their own OCR service. AWS has their own, and everybody has it. Okay, but now even LLMs have the capabilities. We have seen with the QN2 VL model, the vision language models, because these are all vision language models, VLMs. Now they have the capabilities, you know, to uh, extract information from media files, right? And uh, because they use some kind of uh, image encoder model uh, that basically helps you in, you know, extract features from these images and then perform some kind of computation to extract the text. They have layout, bounding boxes, and etc. Right? That you can do it now. If you compare Mr. OCR performance with the other models like Google Document AI, you can see the uh, all the listed models here, Google Document AI, Azure OCR, Gemini, and GPT-40, and Mistral. Mistral overall has performed 94.89, which is fantastic. We have uh, multilingual. It's also multilingual. Being French company, they are focusing more on the European languages, like French, German, Italian. Uh, and scan tables performs really good on the tables. As well. so you can see, it has already surpassed all the other models out there for the OCR task, for the OCR use cases. And we're going to try it out on a couple of things. One is like this handwritten prescription, which it really didn't perform that well. I tried it out already. And and then we're going to perform on, you know, this uh, this thingy, this uh, uh, paper that we have here, you know, by folks from the CMU and Google Research. You can see that's a research paper. So this is what I built. I'll show you how I built it. But let's first uh, uh, put the keys over here. So I'm going to take the keys copy the key so you can't see it like all the skin is blurred so now i have entered my key when you enter the key it will show you select file type if you want to upload a pdf or an image or you know if you select an image so you have local upload and url so you can do it from both either url or a local file upload so first let's see pdf so when you can give a pdf url if you want to directly take it from the url i'll show you both local files pdf and click on process now, once you click on process, right, it, I'm going to show you, it's really fast. It's blazing fast for uh, such a big file of research paper. One of the closest competitor that I see is, guys, Llama Parse by Llama Cloud, you know, which is fantastic as well. Now, if you look at here, this uh, we have a preview on the app. Okay, and this is a very good project for you if you're in college or if you also want to build some kind of services for quick use case validation on the OCR side, you can use this application to you, uh, you know, to do that. Here we have a preview. You can look at the file. Left hand side, we have basically, basically divided this column, the layout in two different columns. In the right hand side, we have OCR results and how you can see the, the quality of it, right? It says leveraging unlabeled data to predict out of distribution performance, sort of work, CMU, the emails, and then we have the name, then we have the abstract, you know, introductions, and it also finds out uh, equations written through LaTeX or whatever you can, you know, if you can go down, you can look at here, right? Fantastic. And I'm basically getting it in Markdown. I did a little bit of 
you know, like I wrote some functions to concatenate all because uh, in a single markdown output, I'll walk you through. You can see the tables over here, right? Fantastic. Uh, looks really good. And it basically extracted everything, you know, from here. So even if somebody, you know, who wants to use through an app, you can use it if you don't want to use through an API. That's why I built this application for you guys. And everything is like free. Just go and use it from my GitHub or from Stimulate Cloud and take an API key to try it out at least. But this was a PDF. What if I want to try image? Now in image, you know, I'll go up in the image. I have a local upload, let's say. Okay, and I'm gonna have a image upload here and click on process. And when I do that, it's gonna process this image now. I have written processing the document. We can change the loader. Now we have an image preview. Earlier we had a file preview. So we have the capabilities of handling both the files and the images. So we have the file preview now where you can preview the file and then you can see the result. So let's have a look at this result, guys. DD form 1289, one number 71, that's fine. DOD prescription, that's really good. Uh, this is also very nice. John R. Doe, HM3, USN, this is clear. Uh, USSA, never forget, and DD 178, that's also fine. Medical facility, uh, where is that? Okay, that's also fine. Date is also very good. Now, here is the subscription. They have written superscription. I don't know what that does that mean, but that's fine. I took it from Google image, so just to try and handwritten thing. I think this is wrong. This is not Peledona. This is Beledona or something. Is this a medic medication? Belladonna medication. Yeah, it's called Belladonna, so that's wrong. Mistral, guys, you are saying that's the best OC. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, that's interesting. You know, and I don't believe leaderboards. I'm not a fan of leaderboards. You bring me LM Arena, you bring me any kind of, you know, hugging face leaderboard. Those are hooks. Anybody can overtune uh, and perform well on the data set that, that have been used for these kind of, you know, uh, leaderboards. I know that's fine. You know, these are the real tests that we do, right? Now, so this is wrong. This is definitely not Peladona. Okay. Uh, this is Peladona. Atropa belladonna is a plant that grows from Western Europe to the Himalayas. It's also grown in the United States. All parts of the plant are poisonous, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And it has been used in some kind of things. Okay. You can see from in Parkinson and asthma and cold and whatever. So that's something. Second one is fine, I guess. M4 gel. That's pretty much uh, interpretable. Uh, Geez, I don't know what's that, but 120 ml. Oh, it, it, M4 gel 998. This really looks wrong. This is not 998 for, I'm pretty sure, okay, but that's fine. And then we have, I think this is M and FI solution, not FF solution. That's also wrong here. Uh, so Sigma is fine. Sigma sig. This is 5 ml, guy. This is it, it writes SMI, which is pathetic. How can this be so wrong? Okay. So we need further fine tuning, guys. Michelle has to do further fine tuning on this. Okay. That's why I'll recommend you use QN2 VL or 5.4 multimodal and fine tune it on these kind of data sets, you know, handwritten notes and scanned documents that will improve the uh, performance, you know. Uh, and nothing against Michelle. See, I, I'm. I'm just a YouTuber and right? I'm giving you my review over here. I'm just trying it right and you can also see it, but uh, I'm really not impressed so far, you know, with this, at least on these kind of images. Uh, it, it can't, it can't do that here. Okay, so I'll take a screenshot and put it here, of course, but uh, let me do that. Okay. Uh, and. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and then we, they have something here. Uh, what do they have? KMT is fine. Expiry date is fine. Uh, these are all fine. Nobody cares about these things. Okay. What, what does that is? P39K106. Lot number. And then the manufacturing is it? MFGR. MFGR. W get. I don't think that's G. That's Y in my opinion. It should be W. Yet, but that's fine. And you can now download also. So what I also have done, I have an ability to download the files, guys. So you can download it as well. 
you know you can open this with let's say for example vs code why not so if i open this in vs code you can find out all the output so basically you can also export the output that's how i build this application you know so i already showing you the pdf i'm showing you the images you have local uploads you have file uploads you can bring your own api keys and you're going to just of course deploy this that's what we're going to do here right i'm going to deploy this and you can find it out in the github repo you know if you want to know how to deploy it's pretty easy guys streamlit cloud okay just go and streamlit cloud and right if they have a community cloud in free where you can deploy just log in you know uh, you know with your with your uh, github repo a github account and then you can just log in and do it so that's how easy it is now i'll show you how i did it very quickly a code walkthrough let's go to main.py here now i have a I'm using Streamlit. Mistral provides their SDK in both uh, TypeScript and Python, you know, to use it. So you can use JavaScript and Python in general, you know, to use their SDK. Before I go into the code, the charge, the cost is also very decent. One dollar for one thousand pages. So you pay one one dollar and you get uh, information from one thousand pages. So that's the pricing. Now. Here I'm using Mistral AI SDK in Python. I have Streamlit as ST, the Streamlit library to build web apps faster. I'm using some utils, OS Base 64, uh, page config, you know, the wide layout of the Streamlit app, and then I have a page title and then the page icon on top in the in the tab. Uh, I'm giving a title to the app. I have some markdown just to make sure that I'm building this app. Expander to write some descriptions. Setting up the API keys, you can see the first thing, pretty simple. Make sure that you write type password just to make it like a strict, uh, you know, over there, a strict, uh, just to make sure that it in, it's not a, not at all an encryption, guys, but, you know, just it hides the password when you are typing it. Uh, some initializing the session state variable for persistence because it still has every time you make a call, it refreshes the page. So when you, when I, I wanted to make sure that when I'm downloading this result, it does not refresh the output. Keep so persistent. That's why I have some session states over here that you can see. Uh, file type, we have a radio button, we have PDF or image, and for each of these files, we have respective upload, URL and local upload. And then looking at the extension, checking out how to upload it, have a button called process, and looking at which extension has been called, uh, has been used to upload. Uh, and then using the API key and creating a payload, you can see this is how I'm creating the payload for the document. We have, if the, if the, if the file type PDF and source type URL, then we create a document URL and pretty easy to use. Otherwise, then you have to get the base 64, right? Uh, that's what we are doing it over here. You can see and get that and then preview it for previewing the file. If that's an image, you know, else you can also write file type elif if you have more things to bring, like docx or something, you can also do that. And then we have OCR response. That's where we are using client.ocr. We are using this model called Mistral OCR latest and passing this thing and getting the output that's all pretty simple this is where we have the pdf preview image preview ht dot image whatever okay to do that and then in the column two we have the download thingy pretty simple 130 lines of code 130 lines out of code i'm gonna host this on streamlit cloud and make this repository public find the link in the description uh, for this code but yeah i just wanted to cover mr ocr app a new service released by mr ai they're not making any open source thing, guys. Nowadays, it seems they had Mistral 3, you know, small and all, but everybody wants to uh, make money, be profitable, you know, just to make sure they can survive in the ecosystem. And that's a good thing, I guess. Uh, but they also contribute to the open source, which is also fantastic. So uh, let me know what you are building with Mistral OCR and what's your opinion on this model. Do you think it's a better model than other things or better than better other libraries? Like when you use Llama parts, for example, is it better than that? Are you using Docling? It's better than that. I don't know. Or how do you compare this with other OCR models? Let me know in the comment box. You can also reach out to me through my social media channel. Find those information on channel banner and channel about us. If you like the content, please hit the like icon. If you haven't subscribed the channel yet, please do subscribe the channel, guys. That motivates me to create more such videos in the near future. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.